I came down to Brighton to catch up with Yanis during the band's UK tour. During Soundcheck, we managed to grab some time to talk through their new album, Life Is Yours. This kaleidoscopic banger of an album that you have out. I think it had to be a big record. It had to be brash and in your face, including the title as well. Yeah. Was that something that became very obvious to you early on in the process of making Life Is Yours? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there was sort of two events that occurred. One was as a reaction to the album we'd made before, Everything Not Saved Will Be Lost, which was kind of sp sprawling and indulging in all of the different facets of, of our songwriting as a band. Before writing this record, we kind of imagined what it would be like to, to, to make the next steps. And what we wanted to do was to pare everything down and kind of reconnect with the rhythmic core of the band. So that was the kind of primary event, which is kind of, you know, explains the, the dance emphasis of the record. And then obviously COVID happened, our tours were canceled, we were in lockdown. We didn't write at the start of it, but then after a while we really started to feel quite restless and frustrated and wanted to create something positive out of the, out of the dark time. And so we found a small room and then within that we, we acted upon this urge to make a dance record, but it was in that confine. And I think that the only way of kind of making it into something that would be long-term worthwhile in the way that we felt about it would be to write a, a record that was joyful and imaginative and kind of combated what was going on outside. But now with these gigs, and we're gonna talk about this later, we're in Brighton at Brighton Centre, few hours time 5,000 people are going to be here going crazy to your music yeah it's going to go off isn't it because yeah it's going to go off. songs are tailor-made for venues like this yeah and for old school Foles gigs I like how at the start of this process I mean ever since you've been talking about it you've been saying it's a disco record it's a disco record it's made for people to dance to yeah and it does not disappoint in that respect I think it's precisely because of the lack of live music and the lack of particularly people being able to congregate and come together during the last few years, that, that our desire was to it, it inhabit those spaces that were absent. So when we were writing, it was like, imagine how good it would be to leave the rehearsal room right now and go out to a club or to a pub or to listen to loud music with our friends. You know, we were, all of those things that we were denied, we wanted to revel in and capture in song form and then have this document from that era that then would be ready to be released now, which is exactly what's happening. As the world is kind of re-emerging and people are feeling comfortable coming back into rooms together and, and expressing themselves, these songs are there waiting for them. So tell okay, me cool. about the lighting setup again. So this top arm goes right up to the top or it can be brought down low yeah and then it matches the other one it's like the t it's the two lines off the foals logo oh amazing so that's like where it came from and then the, the bigger screen can also drop down and then we can turn off obviously different bits and stuff so do you get involved in the direction of this stuff yeah or do you quite just, a bit yeah. really yeah it almost looks like a sort of boxing ring yeah well i got boxing ring vibes from the picture that i saw yeah yeah, yeah. It's like it's we drop the bar and then we're just totally penned in Oh, amazing. And then we play What Went Down and Black Bull and like the heavier songs kind of penned in the, the thing. There's so many moments in Foles' career, whenever you release anything, I think probably starting from the last record where things really seem to ramp up on a level and you start headlining festivals and playing really important slots live that kind of reflect the nature and the quality and the size of the band that you've become. Yeah. These opportunities will present themselves, you know, everybody will be able to pick up, well, it's 20 years since this, it's 15 years yeah. since that. Do you know what I mean? I mean, one, one thing that I think is interest, you know, interesting and, and is really enjoyable about being in Foles, like from our perspective, is that whenever we kind of say like, oh, you know, what song would people like to hear or what's somebody's favourite album, there's never a consensus in a way where each different album or each different era of the band is somebody's favourite. It's not like with certain bands where everyone knows what the best record is. That's testament to something that we've done there with the band where we've never kind of rested on our laurels and we've tried to create new spaces and it happens to connect with different people. And it's like, it's what keeps this fulfilling now. It's like playing a show like tonight, we get to put in songs from all, all different eras. 
And we're equally as excited about this this new era, you know, and it's just seeing the tapestry of all the songs working and how they connect with people of all ages and from all, all walks of life is just, just amazing. That's it, you're an era's band, which I think is probably the best kind of band to be. 2001 yeah. uh, is the tune that I wanted to talk about, actually. Uh, a, for the sound of it. B, it mentions Brighton in the lyrics. The yes, thing. it does, yeah. What's the deal with that? So, um, yeah, it's, it's good that we're here for that, right? Um, we planned it. Yeah. It's called 2001. You know, we, we moved to Brighton as a band and we had a lot of formative experiences here. We played lots of our early house parties in houses off the Lewis Road. I, I had friends that were studying here. Jack's girlfriend at the time was studying here. So it was a, it was a place where coming from Oxford, you would come here at that age when you're like 18, 19. You're starting to find your feet as an adult. You're, you know, we were partying a lot. There was a kind of exuberant, hedonistic hip vibe you know in Brighton at the time particularly with music cultures lots of good bands lots there's a good scene basically 2001 for me it's it's a song that is set in that era it's a song of being transported back into being that age and it takes place here when I was writing the lyrics I was literally I mean I was basically imagining this promenade out there that really was, yeah do you miss those days then? Do you kind of long for the day to somehow get back to that? I'm, in the depths of COVID, I did. I missed, I pined for anything that was anywhere that wasn't in that room that we we're writing in. So, all, you know, all of the all of the, the songs on Life Is Yours share some element of wishing to be transported from that, writing yourself out of the current situation. If I was to miss something about that era, it would be to do with how the music culture and the music scene worked. I think that it was very much still centered in um, geographical locations. You know, there was like, um, there was a record store and a venue and a practice room yeah. in most cities. And you, it, you'd be, you know, I liked the way that that used to operate. You felt that there was friction and tension and admiration amongst each other. And it, and it spurred everyone on. And I think that that has, ob it's obviously migrated online. Those emotions still exist. But it's different than if you're walking down the street, bumping into somebody with a guitar and you're like, oh, he's off to write a song that's going to be better than mine. And I think that's, it's the visibility of things. So if venues start closing down and record shops close down and you don't have rehearsal rooms, you don't have that, that accessibility for people to uh, work on music in a, in a physical realm, then it becomes more and more invisible. It becomes something that's in a bedroom somewhere, some, somewhere. You don't have yeah. that, that visibility of the culture all the accessibility of it and that's something that will have an effect the lyrics on this record are, are top notch so that's obviously on point at the moment what's that line about driverless cars belonging the ocean or something like that on yeah that's the opening the yeah. yeah line that's uh, a great what does it mean um it just kind of means that where did it come from actually because I, I don't know what it means yeah, I mean, I do still think about that line actually quite a lot because basically I, I like the idea of opening the album with um, Now That I'm Less Hungover because I just thought that was like, <laughs> it, it's taking place after the uh, after the party. But yeah, dry, I mean, I guess it's symbolic of uh, as much as technology and as much knowledge as you think you may have and still, and, and actually often the more of that thing you have, um, it can lead to your, your downfall. It's like, it, it's, you know, Icarus flying too close to the sun. He had, the, he had the best technology at the time, which is wings, but you know it dropped him in the ocean. So this the driver is you. You're always on point with the references, man. <laughs> Where does that come from? It's amazing. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could know sometimes where, where the lyrics from. comes from and stuff, but I just tried to, yeah, just follow, follow, follow the pen, basically. All right, man. I gotta let you go because you need to sound check. Um, thank you for having us down here. Pleasure. At Thanks for coming today. The show's looking incredible. The album is sounding incredible. Yanis, thank you very Wicked. much. Wicked. Thank you. Thanks a lot.